Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing absolutely well. Guys, in this video, we are going to solve coding practice questions which are going to be helpful for your upcoming TCS Ignite exam. So if you are also going to prepare for your up, uh, if you are also preparing for your TCS Ignite exam and if you want to practice coding questions, so this video is going to be helpful. Uh, I just want to let you know that there is already one video that I have posted in which I have covered around 10 practice questions. Oh, practice coding questions okay you will get that video in this playlist i have a complete playlist for tcs is smart and ignite prep and you will find that uh, coding video here in this playlist make sure to check that too okay in this video we are going to solve more coding questions and also uh, if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss upcoming videos that i post in future so let's start with today's video let's look at this problem the problem is implement a tag in python okay so we are going to solve this problem using python Okay, but you have the option that you can solve it in any other language also let's understand what is this problem first of all if you are not aware what a stack is a stack is basically a data structure that we have okay so the like diagrammatical representation of a stack is something like this it follows basically uh, last in first out principle okay i'll tell you what does that mean okay, if we have the elements as one two and three Okay, and if we want to insert these elements into this stack how we will insert it so first of all we are going to insert one okay then we are going to insert two and then we are going to insert three now when we have to remove the data or take out the data from this stack how it will be removed it will be third will be the one which will be which needs to be removed first because uh, FIFA, uh stack follows lifo pattern which means last in first out whichever was the last element that was inside the stack has to come out first okay so the output should be 3 to 1 okay hope you understood this much basic concept of stack now there are some names for the operations that we have in stack okay like uh, entering a data into stack like for example we have 1 2 3 right we entered the data into stack that is called as push okay you have to understand these ter terminologies and taking out the data from a stack is called as pop okay so these things you have to understand so operations like entering the data and taking out the data are called as push and pop okay let's now understand how we can implement a stack in python okay for that we have taken this code see first of all uh what what is this uh, class stack so this is the this is the class to implement a stack data structure first of all then what we are doing here okay so here what we are doing is we are initializing okay initializing initializing an empty list to store as stack elements okay because how we will implement stack using list okay so we have initialized an empty list to store the stack elements into it next up we have this one okay that is def push self i shell and item and self dot items dot append item what this part is doing is it adds an element okay that is it adds an element to the top of the stack okay Okay, so which is a push operation basically right i told you uh adding an element is basically called as push again this is what this is simply pop element pop right which means removing okay so this part is what removes an element uh from the top of the stack okay basically whatever operation happens from the top only because until and unless you don't remove the top one uh the rest can't be accessed okay so that is what you have to understand so here what we are doing pop self if not self dot is empty uh, return self dot items dot pop basically we are checking if it is empty or not and then if it is not empty then we have to pop the item uh, from the top okay next is uh, next is what that we have is empty okay so is empty is basically it uh, it what this will do is it will return true if the stack is temp empty otherwise false okay so uh, is empty check basically this is nothing but a is empty check okay why do why so because see i told you right here we are implementing is empty so that is why we have written this one here okay next is your peak now what is peak okay you have to understand so see uh peak is basically used to return the top element without removing it okay so return the top elements without removing it okay see there are two things uh, i'll tell you for example if you have this stack okay one two so there are two things that can happen you can perform a pop operation which will also gives you two but after the pop operation the stack will be something like this okay without having two in it and there can be other operation where if your stack have one and two and then you perform peak operation on that stack and then it will also give the output as two but your stack will remain as it is because you are just peaking the value okay or checking the value from the top of the stack and not removing it okay so hope you have understood the difference between peak and pop uh 
नेक्स्ट इज योर साइज ओके सो दिस पार्ट इज डूइंग वॉट दिस पार्ट इज लाइक रिटर्न इट रिटर्न द रिटर्न द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट ओके नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट इन दिस टैग सो एट एनी पॉइंट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेक वॉट इज द साइज सो दिस इज फॉर दैट पर्पज ओके सो लेट सी वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल यूज केस वॉट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर लाइक क्रिएटिंग अ न्यू स्टैक हेयर ओके सो स्टैक इज इक्वल्स टू स्टैक फंक्शन तो फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर डूइंग इज स्टैक डॉट पुश वन विच मीन्स वी आर पुशिंग वन to the stack okay next is stack dot push to again we are running the push methods uh, so it will go here okay and it will like just uh, do the procedure of entering or pushing the element into the stack these two are done next is print stack dot peak okay what does this means right i told you right whenever we'll run a peak it will just print okay and not pop or remove anything okay so see at this point our output got that we got is 2 next is stack dot pop now at this point when we do pop okay so this element is removed right and again we are not printing anything so nothing will get printed but in the next statement again we are peaking okay now we are checking which is the topmost element at this time so when we will do again we will get the output as one which means the two that was on the top is now removed and then we have one at the top now so hope you have understood this this is how a stack can be implemented in python let's look at this problem in this what we need to do is we need to implement a queue in python okay So we have the code for it, but before that, let's understand how queue operates in uh, like data structure. Queue is basically a data structure which is used for managing data. Okay, so queue. Uh, let's see if we have elements. Okay, like uh, one, two, three. Let's suppose so if we have elements one, two, and three. Now, if we want to enter something into queue, we will enter it in this way. First one will go, then two, and then three. Okay, and uh, queue follows on FIFO principle. Okay, FIFO as in first in. first out okay which means whatever the element that has entered first has to come first okay uh which means when i need to remove something from the queue the first element that will be removed will be one okay then next that can be removed is two and then only three can be removed okay which means whichever entered first will come out also first okay that is the basic uh, principle of queue and uh, there are terminologies in queue it's also we have a terminology like n queue and dq okay nq means entering the data and dq means removing the data hope you understood it let's now see the implementation or, or the code that we have here so first of all class queue is basically the class to implement the queue data structure next up we have this one okay that is uh, in itself self dot items so this this is what initializing an empty list to store uh, initializing an empty list okay basically we are initializing an empty list so that uh, like uh, the, for the implementation of queue right we need a data so data like something as a placeholder that is for that purpose next is what we have is nq okay as i told you nq is what nq operation is to add the element so this part what it is doing is add the element to the uh, add the element okay at the end of the queue okay because see if we have already this much data in the queue like okay 1 2 and 3 and if you want to add next data where it will be entered it will be entered at the rear end okay which means at the last so this is for that purpose nq then we have dq dq as i told the terminology dq is used for removing the removing the element okay and from where it will be removed it will be removed from the front okay that you have to remember so that is what first of all we are checking if not of self dot is empty then return self of item self dot items dot pop of 0 okay 0 means what the first index whichever in the value on the first index pop that okay or remove that and also note out uh, note that before that we are also checking that the, uh, the queue is not empty okay it should not be empty otherwise there is no point of performing an operation on it okay next is what next is just a function check to check if the queue is empty or not so how we will check it just by checking the length of the uh, queue so self dot items this will give us if the uh, this is for check uh, the queue is empty or not okay hope you have got it next is what checking the size of the queue so this returns the number of elements in the queue okay simply returns the number of elements at any point if you want to check what is the current size number of elements in queue let's see the example usage of it so first of all what we are doing queue equals to queue um, function this is what it is doing it is creating a new queue okay then we are doing queue dot n queue basically what does this does uh, in our queue it will enter the first element okay like this next up what we have q dot nq2 which will enter one more element into this and then we are printing that is q dot dq okay now i told you right what is dq dq is removal so we will remove one item that is removes and returns the front element okay 
which means it will remove it and then returns it which means the output will come at as one hope you have understood it so this was a simple implementation of q in python that we have seen but you are uh, you have the option to implement it in any other language also let's look at this problem that we have the question is find the intersection of two arrays in python okay uh, so see let's understand the problem what we need to do in these kinds of question is you you will be having uh, two arrays okay like for example the first array is one two three four and the second array is three four five and six now what you have to find you have to find the intersection okay now what is intersection the same common thing that is coming in both the arrays so in these two arrays the common thing that is coming is three and four so that is going to be our output okay and these two were the inputs okay these two arrays were the inputs that we had okay hope you have understood the problem statement now let's see how we are going to solve it very quickly see we are going to create an intersection function and the purpose of this function is to find the intersection of two arrays that is why we are taking the two input arrays that we have array one and array two okay let's suppose this was our array one and this was our array two now once we have taken the arrays what is this part doing this is the most important thing okay because here only the entire logic is like implemented so see this is converting converts both lists to sets okay both lists lists or uh, you can also say arrays we are converting both the arrays to sets and then find common elements using set intersection ba basically uh, in set we have this thing that you can find the uh, intersection easily okay so that is what we are doing we are first of all converting uh, both the list to set okay that is list of set array 1 and then set array 2 and based on that we will just find the uh, like common intersection okay so uh, next uh, like let's see the usage of it so the usage of it is like simply we have intersection function where we are passing the two uh, arrays and then it will just give us the output with the intersection okay see simply and uh, this was pretty basic implementation the time complexity if you say it will take big of n and uh, that's all if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section let's look at this problem that we have the question is count the occurrences of each word in a sentence in python okay so let's understand the problem statement that we have we will be given a input statement or an input sentence let's see the sentence that we have in this case the sentence is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog okay this is our sentence that we have okay now uh, what is the output that we are expecting in this case the output should be something like this like which means the number of times each uh, word has came in this sentence for example the if you see this the it has came twice so the should be twice right then what is next uh, quick quick has came only once right so it should be one next is brown so brown again is one so it should be one in this way we have to tell the occurrence of every single word okay that is only our question now let's see the logic how we are going to implement it the simple logic that we are going to do is what we are going to do we are going to uh, iterate over this sentence first of all whenever we encounter any space what we will do we will consider the characters before that as a word and that word we will store it in a dictionary okay and uh, after that we will just see if that word is already there then we will increment the value of it to uh, next value okay for example if this the initially we have stored it as one and then we are performing a check next time when we get the the, the uh, it has already it was the value for it was already there which means we will increment it which means it was already there once okay in the same way we will do this for every single uh, word in the sentence let's see how we can perform is see first of all this is the function okay that is the function to count the occurrences of each word in the sentence next up we have uh, words equals to sentence dot split okay basically using this what it does is it splits the sentence into words and counts how many times each word has appeared okay next one uh next one is your dictionary uh to store the this is your dictionary okay to store the word in word counts basically then what we are doing is we are iterating here in this case okay as i told you right we will iterate so uh, iterate through each word in the dictionary if a word is already there in the dictionary increment the count okay that is this part if word in word count dict which means if the word is already there then increase the word count okay and else if not keep the uh, like if it is not there then mark the word count as one okay which means the word is you are encountering the word for the first time 
and then once all this entire iteration is done then simply we will return the word count dictionary and which will have the like count of all the words in our sentence so in this way if you see this example also we have already seen the sentence was the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and the output for this is the is coming twice quick is coming once brown is coming once fox is coming once rest everything is coming once only the word the is coming twice okay hope you have understood the logic here let's look at this problem that we have find the missing number in an array containing 1 to n in python okay so see we will be having an array given to us like this 1 2 okay 4 and then 5 so what is the missing uh, number in this uh, array okay the number is 3 right because 3 is not coming here rest everything is there so what we are going to output that is the output for this question is going to be 3 now how to like write the code for this first we have to understand the logic how can we figure out which is absent or which one is missing okay so see in order to figure it out which one is missing for, uh, there is one logic that we can implement there are multiple ways okay you can do it via other way also but i'll tell you one of the ways see you know uh, there is a formula that we have the sum of first n natural numbers we can calculate that how using this formula n into n plus 1 divided by 2 okay there is this formula so if you have like five natural numbers okay in this way 1 2 3 4 and 5 so if you want to count or uh, the sum how you can do using this formula if you put the n value as 5 then 5 plus 1 divide by 2 this will give you the sum of all these okay what we can do you can use this right to find the sum of all natural numbers and after that you can do the summation of actual numbers in the array once you do that you will subtract it right so for example let's see 5 into 6 by 2 is going to give us 15 okay and then let's sum of some these numbers okay 1 plus 2 is 3 3 plus 4 is 7 7 plus 5 is 12 okay which means uh, 15 minus 12 if we do what we get 33 right so 3 is our missing number hope you have understood the logic what that was that i'm trying to explain right now let's see the implementation of this code see initially this is our function okay that we are writing first thing that what we are doing is n n is what n is equals to length of nums plus one why we are doing plus one because the array that is given to us has one missing item right so that is why what we are doing we are doing plus one so that when we use this formula uh, our answer is correct because in this formula we have to take the n natural numbers one okay not the elements that we have having in the input array because input array is given to us after removing one element right so that is why in order to calculate the actual uh, natural number sum we are adding it in the n only right so hope you have understood it so here we are doing length of nums plus one and uh, then what is the next thing total sum is equals to n into n plus one divided by two that is uh, divided by two that is our formula okay simple formula total sum we are calculating then actual sum how we can calculate the actual sum using the sum of the numbers that are there in the array once we have got that we will just sub uh, minus or subtract these two values that is out of the total sum we will minus the actual sum and whatever the return value that we are getting that is only our output okay output as in the missing number okay and here we have taken the same uh, like input that we have here so first of all we are like feeding the array into our find missing number a uh, function and then once you once the entire function is implemented our return value will give us the output as 3 which is the missing number hope you have understood it so guys that's all for today's videos hope you found it helpful if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section make sure to join me on telegram and you can even uh, follow me on instagram and ask your queries in the instagram dm as well and guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure to do so so that you don't miss any important updates from the channel so that's all for today's video thanks for watching the video